Hello, this is uh, Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. So in today's video, we are going to talk about why do we need to use methanol during KF titration? I am sure you must have analyzed sample for water content by using KF uh, apparatus. And uh, you must have also used methanol as a solvent uh, during the analysis. So the purpose of making today's video to understand the use of methanol and this could be a potential question in your next interview. So let us understand, you know, what is the Card Fisher reaction and uh, how it takes place? Because unless and until we understand about the mechanism, the principle of the Carl Fisher reaction, we will not be able to explain why methanol is required. So in step number one, the alcohol reacts with sulfur dioxide and base to form an intermediate alkyl sulfide salt. Now before we discuss about uh, step number one and two, let us first understand what are the constituents or the composition of the Carl Fisher reagent. So Carl Fisher reagent consists of uh, alcohol, it can be methanol, it consists of base like pyridine or imidazole. It also contains sulfur dioxide and iodine. So we understand the four different components of the Carl Fisher reagent. So during the reaction, when you analyze your sample for the water content, what actually happens? So there is alcohol present into a Carl Fisher reagent. There is a sulfur dioxide present into a Carl Fisher reagent. And these two uh, and base that is imidazole or maybe uh, pyridine. So this reacts with each other and result into an alkyl sulfite. Result into an alkyl sulfite which is an intermediate. Let us understand the reaction mechanism how it looks. So alcohol plus sulfur dioxide and plus base. This result into a formation of alkyl sulfide that is SO3. Sulfide stands for SO3. So this is the intermediate salt we get. In the step number two, this alkyl sulfide salt gets oxidized by iodine to an alkyl sulfate salt. So let us understand how this reaction takes place. The conversion of alkyl sulfide to alkyl sulfate with the help of oxidization reaction. And here is the reaction. It looks little complex, but don't worry. I am going to explain how this is going to happen. So this is the alkyl sulfide that we got in a step number one, right? So this alkyl sulfide in presence of water, in presence of water and this iodine, this iodine is going to oxidize. This iodine is going to oxidize alkyl sulfide salt. And this is the alkyl sulfate salt you get. So there is alkyl sulfide salt, water, iodine. Then there is a base example. I said that the imidazole or pyridine that is R dash N and converting into hydroiodic acid salt plus alkyl sulfate salt. So having under, having discussed about this reaction, what you can learn that, you know, the oxidation reaction consumes water. The oxidation reaction consumes water. Now look at here. There is a water molecule required because without the water molecule, the oxidation will not occur. And that is what the water molecule will get consumed during this oxidation reaction. And one mole of iodine will be responsible for consumption of one mole of water molecule. So in Carl Fisher titration, you will actually understand the content of water based on to the consumption of iodine. Because the consumption of iodine 
will be directly proportional to the content of water and this is very much clear by this reaction so to happen this to happen the oxidization or oxidation of alkyl sulfite salt uh, you must understand that how this alkyl sulfite salt gets formed and the, to form the alkyl sulfite salt you need a base and you need the alcohol so we'll talk about the base requirement and is generally uh, earlier the pyridine was very popular base which was used in the preparation of Carl Fisher reagent but afterwards it is found to be a carcinogenic in nature it is toxic it is uh, hazardous and because of that this pyridine got replaced by imidazole so these are the bases now uh, or the imidazole is primarily the base used for the manufacturing of the Carl Fisher reagent so second important point is the alcohol so what solvents are used or what is the alcohol generally used so generally methanol or diethylene glycol monoethyl ether is preferred so between these two the important question now which is our the discussion of today's point is why methanol is preferred see unless and until you explain the working principles of the Carl Fisher reagent one cannot understand the need and requirement of the alcohol or methanol and that's the reason I explained it uh, you know the need of methanol with the help of the titration reaction so you must also do the similar efforts in making interviewer clear that why it is very much required so the point number one methanol is readily available so the important point is not only any methanol grade but the dry methanol right you must have read onto the label of the bottle that it is not just any methanol but it is a dry methanol which is containing almost negligible amount of water or no water content because at the end you are going to quantify the water content and for that reason your methanol should be free of the water and that is called as the dry methanol so this dry methanol is uh, readily available and that makes its preferred choice as a solvent the second is it is relatively simple to dry hmm? so it is easy to remove the water from the methanol and and that's the reason it is available uh, readily for the use and third one is it's inexpensive it is inex inexpensive it is uh, cheap not that costly and because of these three reasons right and as there is a need of alcohol as a part of the Carl Fisher reagent the methanol becomes the preferred choice I hope you know how this uh, particular question can be answered and for that reason you must also explain the reaction mechanism of the Carl Fisher reagent thank you so much